Okay, something you may or may not know about is that all electric cars are not created equal. Some have active thermal management to heat and cool the battery to keep it around 72 degrees, I think, which is what they like them optimally, and some don't. Now, I drive a Tesla Model X, you probably know from my channel, and as you can see in this article, this is Tesla's method here of cooling the battery. They, they circulate uh, a giant long snaky tube with ethylene glycol in it, which is the coolant, through the battery cells. They try to get them as close as possible to cool off as much as possible all the time, or, or even heat them too. They've got a heater for use when the temperatures are below freezing, because when they are below freezing, these battery cells all have liquid in them and they freeze. So they either will charge very slowly or not at all in the case of supercharging if they're below freezing. So you got to heat them up. Anyway, the cooling them is a bigger thing because when you're really putting in a massive dose of electricity, you've got to keep these packs cool. And that's been part of the problem with the Nissan LEAF, um, that it's been a big problem because the Nissan LEAF, this is a new model, 2018, has not had any kind of thermal management, and that has significantly affected the life of the battery and the range. And unfortunately, even on the 2018, from what I'm finding here, Nissan LEAF does not have thermal management in their battery and if you expect to do a lot of charging, or, or actually just rapid charging, extreme weather conditions, um, of course this is not even capable of long distance driving, not really. You need something with active thermal management, and unfortunately Nissan Leaf doesn't have it, even the newest generation. So let's see, this is, uh, wait, this is that's actually another article. This article is on the Chevy, Chevy uh, Bolt, and actually, Chevy Bolt has a thermal management system that's a lot more complicated and not as straightforward as the Tesla system, but apparently it works. But I'd say if you're going to get an electric car and you're going to keep it long term, you're going to want something with a thermal, an effective thermal management system in the battery. So this new Chevy Bolt in 2017 has it. Ford, this Ford, uh, was it Electric Focus has it apparently. This is from back in 2011 when Tesla did there. So they came out with something nice. Uh, in terms of a feature in the, in the beginning. I don't know how long how these things have done in terms of longevity, who's actually bought them, I don't know. And of course, they're probably not capable of long distance driving either, unfortunately, like the Tesla. But okay, the, here's another article, which is the best electric vehicle battery cooling system? BMW's got one, I think Audi's got one. Apparently the BMW is supposed to be some newer technology, I'm not familiar with it. But I think the Audi is actually uh, apparently an inferior technology from what they're showing here. But it's something to check out. You want to make sure that whatever electric car you buy has an effective thermal management system. And are you going to be using it for long distance? And my guess is if you're not buying a Tesla, you're not going to be doing any long distance driving. But still, if you don't want this thing to die on you, um, and here's the, the new Chevy Bolt battery pack, uh, talking about thermal management system, and you can see a cutaway version of the battery. You can see what one's double stacked on the back. That's actually probably not good because when you double stack it, you're going to double the heat. Anyway, I think, who knows, Tesla's new Roadster may have a double stack battery. See, it's double stacked in one portion of it in the back. Tesla's Roadster may have a double stack battery to get 200 kilowatts that they're claiming the power out of it. But anyway, give me your comments on this. What do you think about thermal management? Uh, I think it's going to have to be, get better and better, actually, as battery packs improve and charge rates improve. I think Tesla's main char max charge rate right now is 120 kilowatts. But they're saying we will be in the hundreds and hundreds of kilowatts of charge soon. But of course, they're going to have to get better and better cooling systems to be able to take that kind of a charge without killing the batteries. So what do you know about this? Anything else? Let me know in the comments. And again, thanks for watching. And let me know about any kind of ideas you may have for future videos on subjects like these. Thank you.